Hello, AB Stops. Hope you guys are having an awesome day. Um, today we're doing the second half of 6-2. Um, so the last section, 6-2-1, was um, transforming random variables linearly, adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing by a constant. Um, this time we're going to be taking two separate random variables and either combining them or subtracting them and finding the new expected um, the expected value and the new standard deviation. Okay, so that's our soap app for today. And uh, yeah, good stuff. All right, so combining random variables. Um, if you have two separate random variables, um, say x and y, right? If t is the combination of the two, x plus y, then your new expected value of, um, of t instead of x and y um, is just the combination of the means, right? So basically that just means if I have two distributions with different means and I want to add them together, then the mean of the new distribution of all the values added together is just the means added together. Okay, um, so then I can also write that as the following. Similarly, if I'm taking two random variables and subtracting them, then the mean of the new distribution is just the difference of the means of the two original distributions. So that would be this next section here. E, uh, the expected value of the new distribution is the expected value of the first minus the expected value of the second. Okay, if you want to combine variances, um, or standard deviations. Um, things get a little more complicated, right? The, the first two are pretty self-explanatory, right? Um, for this one and this one, pretty, pretty self-explanatory. But um, if you're trying to find the standard deviations, the combined standard deviations, a couple things you need to know. One, you can't combine standard deviations. You can only combine variances, okay? Second, you can only do this if the events are independent, okay? There is a way to calculate it if they're not independent, but it's beyond the scope of the course, and we don't want to deal with it. So basically, if they're not independent um, random variables, then you cannot find the combined standard deviation or variance, okay? So um, if you have two independent random variables, x and y, and your new distribution is x plus y, then the new variance of the new distribution, the combined distribution, is um, the sum of the, the variances of the other two distributions. Which means then if I want to find the standard deviation, I have to take the square root of both sides. And if you're finding the difference between two random variables, so if your new distribution is x minus y instead of x plus y, um, you actually combine the variances the exact same way. Um, because remember, variances are always positive, so you're not going to be subtracting anything anyways. So you're not going to have any negatives. So it's a good way to remember it. Um, but so basically, I can literally copy and paste what I just wrote for the previous answer. This part. Here are some warning reminders, right? Um, remember, the standard deviation part only works for independent variables. Um, and also, you cannot add standard deviations. You can only add the variances. So keep that in mind. All right, let's try some examples, because um, this, in theory, is fine, but in examples, you're like, wait, what am I supposed to, uh-huh? I'm confused. Okay, so let's do some examples. All right, so um, if you guys have never played roulette, right, it's just um, a casino game where you, they roll a little marble and it lands in this little circular thing and then whatever slot it lands in, so it'll either land in red or black or green. There's two greens and all the other ones are red and black. Um, so, and you can bet on numbers, you can bet on colors, um, you can bet on odds or evens. So in this case, we're just going to do um, a simple example where we're looking at the total amount gained for the player um, on a single $1 bet on red. Okay, so I come into the casino and I'm like, all right, I got $1 to bet. So I place my $1 chip on red. Okay, if 
it rolls on red, I win a dollar. Okay, if I if it rolls on black or green, I lose a dollar. Okay, so right here is um, my random variable where x is the total amount gained from a single one dollar bet, and I lose a dollar if it lands on anything but red, so black or green, and the probability of that happening is 20 out of 38. The probability of me winning another dollar is uh, 18 out of 38. That's how many reds there are on the roulette wheel. Okay, So your expected value is negative 1 times 20 over 38 plus 1 times 18 over 38, which is about negative 0.05 cents. So 5, or sorry, 0.05. 0.05 dollars, which is five cents. Okay, um, so in the long run, if I played a dollar bet over and o over and over, I would expect to lose a total of like five cents. Um, okay, standard deviation, calculate that the same way we've been calculating it before. Um, I take my negative one minus 0.05, square it times the probability of that happening. Blah 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 blah. See the other videos if you're still not sure how to do. Standard deviation is about one dollar. Okay. Um, so, oh yeah, I need to make sure I have a square right here. Okay. Um, expected amount gained from two. Okay, so next problem is, all right, now we want to combine random variables. So now we want to have two separate one dollar bets, and then maybe three one dollar bets, and then maybe ten one dollar bets. And we want to know my expected um, loss or gain after I've done two separate one dollar bets and essentially now I'm just looking at two of the same distributions right like that and um, according to right our notes from above if I'm combining two distributions the mean of the total combined distribution is just the sum of the mean um, of the other two distributions. So my two distributions are the dis distribution of um, a one dollar bet plus the distribution of another one dollar bet. Okay, And so um, I'm actually just adding mu sub x plus mu sub x. Um, the mean of the first is negative Five cents minus five cents, and same thing with the second. So I've got negative 0.05 plus negative 0.05. So the mean, the expected amount gained or lost um, from two one dollar bets is ten cents. Three one dollar bets, it's going to be minus fifteen cents, and ten one dollar bets is going to be what fifty cents uh, for the combined standard deviations. Um, Remember, the standard deviation of the first uh, distribution was $1, approximately. I rounded. But anyways, um, you need to combine variances. So if I want um, two separate $1 bets, my um, new combined, let's call it sigma c, my combined variance is the variance of the first distribution plus the variance of the second distribution. So in this case, the variance of the first distribution is just 1. So we square that 1 squared plus 1 squared is 2. So that's the variance of the combined distribution, which means my standard deviation of the combined distribution is the square root of 2. Okay, so that would be for two single $1 bets. And then you do the same for three $1 bets and ten $1 bets. All right, so um, be careful about what they're asking for, right? So what if a random variable is y equals 2x versus y is um, a combination of two random variables, right? The first one is just a linear transformation. Um, so you're multiplying every x value by 2. In this one, you're, you're actually combining two separate distributions, right? So this would be like um, two $1 bets, right? Uh, bets. <laughs> and this one would be, instead of doing a $1 bet, a $2 bet, right? 
um, a single one single two dollar bet okay so it in this case the final answers would be the same just because of the way the numbers are work in this example um, but it's not the same thing so be careful about that okay all right so we're going to try one more example um, of a continuous distribution combining two or more continuous distributions and finding the mean and standard deviation of those. So go ahead and read the following problem. All right, so you've got apples, right? And the distribution of apple weights, single apple weights, is normally distributed with a mean of 9 ounces, standard deviation of 1.5 ounces. So that's our apple distribution for a single apple. Now, if, the bags, if bags of apples are filled by randomly selecting 12 apples, what's the probability of the sum of the weights is less than 100 ounces. So in this case, you're actually taking this single ap apple distribution and you're adding it 12 times to get your new distribution. So your new distribution is this time plus itself 12 times, which means our new distribution is going to be, um, it's going to have a mean of the sum of the previous means, so 9 plus 9 plus 9 plus 9, 12 times. So our new mean is 12 times 9. And our new sigma, we have to do a little work to find this. Um, number one is you got to make sure that it's independent. Um, and so does the sum, does the weight of one apple depend on the weight of the next apple, right? Are those events independent? Yes, they are. They should not be depending on each other, the weights. So it makes sense for them to be independent. So we can actually calculate the standard deviation. Um, your new standard deviation, you have to combine variances. So let's do that first. Okay, so we need to find our variance for the first distribution. So our standard deviation was 1.5, which means our variance is 1.5 squared. That's uh, 2.25, which means our new sigma is going to be, our new variance is going to be 2.25, right, because that's our variance, plus 2.25, because that's the variance for each one of these little independent distributions, right? And we add that up 12 times. So really it's going to be just 12 times 2.25. And that is the variance, which means the standard deviation. We need to take the square root of that. So that means for the 12 apples combined for a single bag of apples, we have a mean of 108 and a standard deviation of the square root of 27, which is about 5.1962, okay? And then they're asking us, hey, we're not done, okay? It says, what is the probability the sum of the weights of 12 apples is less than 100 ounces? And so you need to make a new distribution, your new um, combination of distributions here with the mean of 108 and standard deviation of 5.196 and then we want to know the probability of the weights of the 12 apples being less than 100 so I want to find um, 100 on my normal curve here and then I want to shade the area that I'm trying to find right less than 100 ounces okay and so then I need to find that area and you can do that with normal CDF or your Z table. So my Z score is 100, right? X minus mean over standard deviation, um, negative 1.5396. And then I want to find the probability that my Z score is less than that, negative 1.5396, right? Which is the same thing as the probability of um, my X value being less than 100. So I can do this on my calculator, uh, go to second distribution, normal CDF, or in my table, um, and I want my lower bound to be negative infinity, upper bound is 100, mean was 108, and standard deviation was 5.1962. Uh, Enter, and you get your probability. Hello!
point.